the structural engineering research center is a part of uh, uh, CSI laboratory, one of the 38 laboratories uh, under CSI, uh, particularly working in the domain of uh, structural engineering field. So basically I work in the area of uh, structural health monitoring techniques, system identification techniques, AE applications uh, for uh, damage diagnostics and uh, how to assess the performance of the structures through signal processing and signal analysis and the data uh, analytic tools uh, etc etc so that's why i chose the topic on uh, this application of this artificial intelligence techniques uh, in the area of structural engineering how from the conceptual stage of the design to the diagnosis stage of uh, how to assess the damage or how to identify the damage in the structures through some of the ai tools so some of the works which has been carried out uh, 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 in our laboratory. Um, I will just present as uh, some of the studies directly. I will not go deep into the uh, techniques of AI. I am not going to teach about uh, the AI as such because we are not the experts for the AI. We use the AI for uh, the application purpose as a tool, like as any other tool we use it for uh, uh, helping us. So we use our AI tool to help us in uh, identifying or giving uh, some of the uh, means uh, uh, to take the some decisions, etc. Okay. So, Madam already spoken about us and this thing. Uh, basically, actually as an AI tool, as the first and foremost actually as you know anybody. So it is a called an expert system that is a basically emerging as a part of the AI tool in the first place. So that is called the knowledge based expert systems where the knowledge has been incorporated in a particular rule based kind of a system and that rule based kind of a system will give you the uh, information or the uh, diagnostics part of to conclude on a particular uh, uh, area of interest. If you are posing the question or if you want to identify or if you want to design a structure, so based on the rules incorporated in the knowledge based system, based on that rules incorporated which has been formulated based on uh, the experts uh, knowledge or from the knowledge obtained from the resources such as the textbooks or quotes or the uh, literature etc. etc. So that has been incorporated into the knowledge base and through that knowledge base that system will give you the answers which are be, which has been posed to that. Okay, So that it will give you the kind of answers and some kind of uh, uh, evidence based system so that you can take your patients how to analyze or how to design the structure, how to uh, identify the damage in the structure etc. Et and the other part is of the AA technique is the artificial neural networks. So now there are several areas of the neural networks have come. So the initial part is the artificial neural network, which basically the uh, 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 has been developed by simulating as our brain system, right? So as our brain is having a neurons, dendrons, right? So if you are studying in the science of biology, so the neurons, how it uh, acts, how it receives the information and how it transfers the information, and how it gives the concluding evidence. So based on that, the artificial neural networks has been developed and it has been programmed and uh, used for several kind of uh, 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 works actually. And the other part of this time I'm going to uh, talk about on this uh, AI technique is on the evolutionary optimization techniques. So anybody is knowing about the evolution of uh, species, right? So, you know the Darwin's theory, right? So, it is the survival of fit fittest. So, in that, what happens is uh, the generation to generation, when we are going from the early stage to the now, from the generation to generation, generation evolution is being happened, right? So, the evolution and the knowledge has been increasing and then it has been enhancing from the generation to the generation. And the old generation, which are not able to fit to that, that has been taken back and the new generation people are coming up, right? So that is the evolutionary based techniques. Basically, it uses the optimization principles. So where we do optimization means whether 
to minimize the cost of construction or uh, to maximize the efficiency of the uh, uh, means uh, construction aspects or the design aspects. So there we can use this kind of a technique. So particularly all these, basically these three techniques I am going to just talk about with reference to the applications on the uh, design of the structures and the detection of damage in the structures of the diagnostics and how to repair the structures, all those things, right? So, as I told, I am not going to talk about uh, how those uh, things have been developed and all, but I am going to talk about how that can be used for our structure engineering purpose, right? Because that is not the uh, basic idea here to learn about how to develop and how to do the coding for that, right? So, I am not going to the basic principles of that. So, if anybody interested, you can go into the basic principles of that, but in the particular area. So, you can get more details on that, how to develop and how to use those uh, systems to develop the coding kind of thing. So, basically, uh, if you see the introduction part, artificial intelligence, it is a branch of the computer science. Basically, it is developed by the computer science people. So, where the human intelligence has been used uh, for developing a, some kind of a, a coding kind of system, so that the intelligent computing systems have been developed so that will be used for uh, the human uh, to assist the humans actually. Because the artificial intelligence, so you cannot replace completely the humans and then use the AI to take the decisions, right? So you cannot yellow also because it always the AI has to be used to assist the uh, human uh, beings so that uh, you can take uh, appropriate and proper decisions in the fast and efficient way. So basically the traditional methods for modeling optimization of the complex structural system basically in the particular in the picture for civil engineering because we need uh, if any of the structures like this kind of structures if we have to design it where you have to use in the constructive stage itself for how the structure has to be looked like and uh, how much uh, space is required and what kind of structure is required and uh, what are the response from the structure, how to design the structure particularly. So, with respect to the loads, what are the maximum loads coming, what is the maximum moments and uh, forces are coming into the structure and all those things you have to analyze the structures, you have to do several trials to be carried out. So, in that particular field, you can use uh, uh, very much uh, uh, efficiently this uh, AI tools. So, such as the kind of a, like a ANN or the genetic algorithm based optimization tools, you can use it so that you can optimize the, the cost of the structure as well as the weight of the structure or the materials on the structure. And you can uh, easily, because if it is a kind of a repeated structure, you can use kind of a, you can train the uh, AI tools. So, with reference to the particular kind of knowledge, so that the AI tools will give you the information on the, with reference to the particular law, what kind of a forces will be coming onto the structure, okay? So that you need not repeatedly redo the analysis, so that the several trials you need not do it. So once you are, like suppose the ANN is there, artificial neural network, if you can train it with some, uh, uh, with reference to some certain parameters, some range of parameters, with reference to the loads or the uh, geometry of the structure, so, it will give you the information, so what is the bending moment and shear force can come when this kind of a load is coming. So instead of going into the complete structure analysis part, okay. And also it, uh, the another tool like genetic algorithm, we can use it, how to optimize the resources and how to optimize the construction aspects as well as the how to how reduce the cost of the construction and the cost of the materials that can be solved by using this. Okay. So basically the John McCarthy is a professor in Dartmouth College in New Year's. He is the first man to come out with the term called AI or artificial intelligence. So now it has become a widespread out of computer science area in almost in all the areas that is being used uh, extensively. So the, it has got uh, many fields, as I told, it has started with uh, like a uh, human intelligence part there, basically as the expert system. So where the human knowledge has been uh, incorporated in the form of the rules as a knowledge based system, 
and the data intelligence techniques has been used and those have been incorporated into the robotic systems as well. <coughs> so basically the main theories and methods what uh, these uh, three techniques whatever I told like uh, expert systems or the neural networks or the uh, genetic algorithms or the evolutionary optimization algorithms they use is the the three types of things basically that is called the one is the symbolic type of representation where uh, because uh, you because when you when I ask uh, uh, the some kind of a field experts so uh, they may not be giving the proper answer right so they may be having a some kind of a, a, a information that may be right or that may be wrong okay so or it may be in the range of this much maybe 10 meters to 30 meters it may be like that so that is a symbolic kind of representation where you don't have the uh, like a, uh, a conclusive part actually so where uh, you have got uh, symbolic representation you have to incorporate it into that and uh, the connectionism part is uh, basically uh, like in a neural networks basically it forms like uh, uh, some kind of a one layer to the another layer you have to connect it and then uh, formulate the networks and the path and the behavior so how it will, it will be going from uh, one decision to the another decision etc okay. so basically i will talk on this parts later so coming to that uh, expert system to give you a, just uh, an overview of this uh, expert system it is a basically a uh, computer program uh, uh, which has been uh, developed or the designed to it will act as it will act or replace as a human expert right so it will act, uh, act as an expert to give you a decision so that we can solve any kind of problem uh, which has been designed for that purpose okay. any in any particular domain so basically it is a act as a kind of an expert actually if you go to like a uh, professor or anybody if you pose a question they will give you the answer right so based on their experience and that based on their expertise they will give you the answer so like that the expert system also will behave like an expert in that particular field of area where it has been trained or incorporated to the knowledge based on the knowledge which has been incorporated into that so based on that it will give you the guidance and uh, Addition on that. Okay. So basically, the expert system it is the easiest and the most extensive because it is very easy to uh, develop also because uh, it is a kind of a rule based system. So it is uh, developed based on the second kind of rules if, if and then kind of rules, right? If this much is there, what then what will happen? Okay. So it has been developed in the basically in the 20th century. This has been extensively used for many kind of applications. So the expert system is relying basically on the human experts, existing knowledge based on the setup of the knowledge based system. So where the knowledge from the experts or the other domain fields, which has been formulated to a rule based kind of thing, and here it's been incorporated into the expert system. Okay. So the expert system. Uh, it can be used, uh, it, it has been uh, uh, especially used by several processes for the design purposes and the construction purposes as well as for the uh, geotechnical engineering and uh, disaster prevention and uh, material engineering aspects uh, everything, everywhere. So the expert system actually it is a computer program. So there are certain kind of a, uh, things are there where uh, the one is a knowledge base and another is a inference engine how that uh, knowledge base will be used okay. so there we will formulate a goal because goal is like uh, because we are, uh, every expert system will have a goal okay. it has to be designed to take certain kind of decision right that is the goal because if we want to design a structure okay uh, if i have to design this kind of structure so what is my maximum forces or moments are coming right so that is the goal for that so for that you have the certain parameters are there range of parameters are there what is the geometry or what is the foundation system or all those things those are the facts and those things have been formulated in the form of the rules right so instead of going into the analysis and the design stage 
based on the human experts because if you go to the mastery he will not uh, analyze and uh, design the structure based on his knowledge and expertise he will tell okay so uh, that may be correct or that may be wrong also most of the things 90 percent he will be in the correct way only because uh, over the years he has seen for this much of loading is coming if the g plus 2 building is there how much beam size can be there or how much reinforcement can be incorporated into that how much reinforcement can be used and what is the foundation size and how, how much foundation can be used those are the his expertise or his experience based on that he has taken the uh, decisions and then made it so those kind of five expert uh, rules uh, uh, will be formulated and incorporated in the expert system so those rules will be a searched using the inference mechanism this inference mechanism is kind of an engine so there is also a basically as a computer program it will search through the rules so which has been incorporated and based on that it will come to the facts and conclusions and then it will reach the goal so it will give you the answer for that okay. so actually the expert system uh, which can be used where the theory is not fully formulated basically if i say like uh, if i have to take the decision on a uh, bridge which has to be constructed in a particular area i don't know what kind of bridge to be constructed right so how much size of the bridge has to be there and what kind of expands to be used so there i don't know anything okay so because that is uh, the theory is not fully developed so that depends on again the human expert only or uh, basically depending on the topography area uh, basically uh, uh, on the uh, kind of a what kind of a uh, soil system is there in that particular area whether it is crossing a water body or it is crossing a hilly area or it is crossing a valleys or it is crossing a roadway or the subway so based on that what kind of bridge to be constructed he will take the decision right that kind such, such kind of a problem this kind of expert system is very useful where you don't have the design knowledge but you have the expert knowledge is there right in that particular type of things you can use uh, develop this kind of expert system so that it will give you the decisions on that so if you see the component of the expert systems I told the first and uh, very important thing is the knowledge base how we are going to develop the knowledge base in the system, expert system because this is the core of the expert system where the all the knowledge from the experts or the from the literature or from the course of practice or the from the textbooks that has been formulated and incorporated in the form of the rules in the knowledge base based on this knowledge base only how much uh, intelligently it will give you the answers or they will give you the concluding evidences that will depend on that the inference strategies or the inference engine are the that depends on how the rules has to be searched through to give the concluding evidence and the basically another is the working memory memory that has to be allocated another is the user interface so that because these things you are not a user is not going to have any access because only user can give you uh, the in inputs only he will keep on asking the questions based on what expert system is again posing the questions he will give you the answers or he will give, pose the questions expert system will give you the answers and based on the rules formulated in the knowledge base and based on the inference engine or inference strategy it works right so the user interface has to be also very effectively way to be designed so that the user should not be confused or they should not be giving the wrong answers or the wrong inputs to the expert system so that it may, may be giving you the inconclusive, inconclusive evidence or the wrong answers to that. So that the user interface of the developing also very use, uh, important in the development of the expert system. So basically, that's why the two important aspects in the expert system is the development stage, where you how you are going to build up on the knowledge base. Because the inference engine already, maybe the if you are using the like, uh, uh, any kind of uh, commercial kind of thing the inference engines already may be developed the coding may be available that you can use it directly but uh, uh, when you are developing expert system the main part is uh, how you are going to develop the knowledge base 
and how you are going to the, uh, uh, make the user interface. That is a front end tool. Right? So these are the two development stages. One is the uh, development stage where you are building a knowledge base in the form of the expert knowledge and the expert tools and based on the acquisition of the knowledge. So how you are going to acquire the knowledge. So you can post the you can go to the experts, collect the knowledge in the form of the questionnaires or uh, the, the literature, everything. You can formulate the questions and you can acquire the knowledge and formulate the rules uh, based on the experts' knowledge and uh, develop the knowledge base. So from that knowledge base, the inference engine will look upon into the knowledge base through the set of rules which has been developed uh, in <coughs> the knowledge base. So that it will uh, keep on uh, searching and keep on posing the questions to the user and it will start working on uh, to give the answers to the, uh, the user so that you, you will give the concluding thing on, from the expert system. So that uh, at every stage you can have a kind of explanation facility if user is get confused and uh, are not able to understand what kind of a input to be given so that uh, at a base stage you can have kind of a explanation facility also to the certain questions. So basically coming to the this kind of a inference engine, this is the again the basically the like a motor of the expert system, right? Unless the inference engine works because you have all the kind of knowledge is there but how to search through that knowledge, okay? So the rules which has been formulated in the knowledge base that has to be searched because there are the, some hundreds or the thousands of the rules that has been formulated and incorporated into the knowledge base and a particular kind of a problem and particular kind of a problem to be solved, what kind of rules to be searched into the knowledge base, that depends on how this inference engine works. So this inference mechanism, which has to be, which can be defined as a part of the knowledge based system, the expert system, which compares the information supplied by the user with the knowledge contained in the knowledge base and deduces whatever conclusions may logically follow. Okay. So when you have the certain kind of rules in the expert system, so when you the inference engineer will look into the each rules in the forward strategy or the backward strategy. So in the depth first or the uh, bread yeah. first just say charcoal though. So because you have got the certain kind of a concluding goals because you may have the one or set of goals are there so to give you the answers right. So for each kind of a goal you have got uh, the several set of rules that has been defined and uh, built into the knowledge base and through that set of rules that has to be searched through right. So for that it uses uh, two kind of a strategies one is the backward chaining strategy where in the backward chaining strategy